So you follow Warren Buffett, right? I mean, if you're in investing and you don't follow Warren Buffett, what are you doing? The question is, who does Warren Buffett follow? Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Pradeep and you're watching Vlog of Note. In this video, I'm going to talk about three lessons that you can learn from Howard Marks, co-founder of Oak Tree Capital. Let's get started. So first of all, usual disclaimer here, I'm not a SEBI registered expert. If you want to make your own investments, do your own market research. I'm just a person who has made a reasonable amount of money by investing in the stock market. Now, who is Howard Marks? Well, he's the co-founder of Oak Tree Capital. More about them in just a bit. He has been investing in the stock market for the last 50 years. He's a billionaire, if you care about those kind of things. He's also a writer and he's a prolific investor. He has written a book called Mastering the Market Cycle. I would highly recommend you read it. He's also one of the people who write annual letters and his letters apparently are mandatory reading for Warren Buffett, who's about 50 times richer than him, just saying. Now let's talk about Oak Tree Capital. Now Oak Tree Capital is the world's largest distressed asset investor. Basically, they are the definition of buying low and selling high. They were founded in 1995 by Howard Marks and a couple of his colleagues, and they have a total of $158 billion in assets under management. In 2019, about 62% of the company was acquired by Brookfield Asset Management, with the remaining continuing to be held by Howard Marks and his colleagues. Howard Marks and Oak Tree Capital are one of the best investing combos in the world today, and you would do well to follow them. Anyway, there are three lessons that I think you can learn from Howard Marks. The first lesson that you can learn from Howard Marks is to take out emotion. Emotion and the psychology of the market are incredibly important to any investor. Basically, you should not have emotion in your investing decisions and you should understand the psychology of the market. Envy causes you to borrow money so that you can be richer, faster than your fellow man or woman. For example, Elon Musk. Now you all know Elon Musk and whether you agree or disagree with his methods, you can't deny that he's rich, like capital rich. He's worth over $250 billion. Now just to put that into perspective, if you saved $1 million every single year for 1,000 years, you would reach $1 billion in net worth. And then if you did it for 10,000 years, you would reach $10 billion in net worth. If you did it for 250,000 years, you would reach the net worth of Elon Musk. Now, obviously this does not take into account the accretion of money over time, but it's still something to keep in mind in terms of perspective. Another emotion is panic, like panic selling. Now, a lot of studies have been done, but they have found that married men with children tend to do panic selling a lot more. Hey, I'm married, I have a child, and I know that I've had the temptation from now and then to just basically say, enough is enough. Let me sell my losses and put the money into something secure like a fixed deposit. But people who are successful in the long run in the stock market are people who are able to fight that emotion. Howard Marks is fond of telling a story about Bill and the Corning company. You know Corning, right? They make Gorilla Glass that's found in your smartphone. Anyway, apparently there was a gentleman called Bill, an affable gentleman in his 60s who moved to Florida from the place in which Corning is headquartered and he owned quite a sizable investment in Corning. Before the dot-com bust, he became a millionaire because of Corning's stock going straight up. Now, after the dot-com bust, Corning's stock went from $325 to about $3 and he lost lost all of his money. Why did he not sell when Corning's price was going down? Because he had an emotional attachment to the place in which Corning was headquartered because that's where he was from. All in all, if you are able to remove emotion from your investment thesis, you will do a lot better. The second thing that I think that you can learn from Howard Marks is basically to understand the now. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not about predicting the future. Most people, according to Peter Lynch at least, have lost more money than trying to time a correction than in the actual correction itself. Basically, you should understand what is happening now in terms of company performance and recent world history. There's also this thing about whether a share is priced to perfection. Howard Marks is fond of telling this story about investing in the Nifty 50 in the US in the 1970s. If you had invested in the top 50 companies in the US, in five years, you would have lost most of your money. These companies were trading at a multiple of 70 to 90 and they went to a trading multiple of 7 to 9. So, ouch. 
Obviously, being a distressed asset investor, he talks about buying low and selling high. But most investors get this wrong because they don't know what a real low is and they underestimate what a real high is. For example, if you had invested $1,000 into Amazon at the time of their IPO, a couple of years later, you could have sold your entire position and made quite a killing. However, if you had held on to your investment till current date, you would have made over $2 million. Thus, buying low and selling high and understanding what is happening now is a lot harder than it sounds. The third and final thing that I think you can learn from Howard Marks is basically the pendulum effect. Now, a pendulum, like a market, swings from side to side. Mark Twain apparently said that history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. A market goes up and a market goes down and you need to understand which position we are in the cycle. Larry Fink and Howard Marks are basically calling on the end of globalization as we know it. That's because of the current geopolitical tensions. For example, in the US in the 2000s, they outsourced most of their manufacturing to Asia because it was cheaper. But now because of geopolitical tensions and supply chain issues, they're trying to bring it back to the US and maybe in the next 10 years, they'll find out that reliable is actually not as good as cheap and they'll send it back to Asia. An interesting conundrum here is the stock of Intel versus TSMC. TSMC is one of the world's top semiconductor manufacturers. They are not a Chinese company. They manufacture chips for companies like Apple and people are comparing their stock to the stock of Intel. Intel obviously was a dominant player in the chip making industry and now they're setting up more and more factories in the US and apparently they're going to be manufacturing chips for other companies like Qualcomm. Which is a better stock in my opinion? Well, I would hold TSMC and add to my position of Intel because they have a lot more upside if they can execute on their manufacturing dreams. In normal life, you might have times when things are good and not so good. However, in the stock market, you have times like the pendulum swinging from really great to really bad in a matter of months. For example, in the taper tantrum of 2013, we lost almost 90% of a small cap index fund in India. Ultimately, I think Howard Marks is an incredibly interesting investor and you should definitely follow his portfolio. If you have any of your own favorite investors you'd like to study them, please drop their names in the comment section down below. As always, please go over to YouTube, subscribe to the Vlog of Note channel, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video and I will see you guys in the next episode.